say goodbye to primary sources and say hello to secondary accounts, folklore, and inconsistency. So, the two most famous stories about St. Patrick are one, he got rid of all the snakes in Ireland, and two, he used the common shamrock to explain the Holy Trinity. Starting with the snake thing, yes, there are no snakes in Ireland, but only because there were never any snakes to begin with, nor legless lizards. Oh. Anyway, um, there are, there's no fossil evidence, written evidence, like base, like there's no like myths that have snakes in them from Ireland until like afterwards. Um, there's no artifacts containing, like, illustrations of snakes. Nothing points to serpentine creatures of any kind in Ireland, except for maybe earthworms. Because, uh, you see, snakes never made it over to the rest... I mean, they made it everywhere in the rest of the British Isles, but they never, like, went on the land bridge to cross over during the Ice Age, so they just never got to Ireland. Um, so if there weren't any snakes in Ireland, then where does the story come from? Well, it's symbolism. Snakes is a medieval code name for pagans. Consider, if you will, how in stories like St. George and the Dragon, the slaying of the dragon represents the triumph of Christianity over paganism. And like snakes and dragons are more or less the same thing in folklore. And, um... The shamrock thing could the shamrock thing could be true, but I'm going to tell you the, the short version of the story before I like tell you like all of the backstory to it if that makes sense. So, he was preaching to some pagans and they were having trouble understanding how the Father, Son and Holy Ghost thing works along with the one true God thing, you know, like three in one, but it's kind of it's confusing. So, um so he picked like a nearby leaf off of a clover plant and explained how like the three parts the three parts of the same whole how the which is similar to how the clover leaf has like three leaves and they and they get it and so that's why uh, shamrocks are associated with Patrick and by extension Ireland but um I'm kind of skeptical of this because Patrick doesn't mention anything like that in his writings um, or at least the ones I could find. I mean, I guess it might have just been, like, a minor event that's not worth writing about in the grand scheme of his life, but I feel like that might be something to mention at one point or another. Um, yeah. It, the first, like, written account of this is, like, from 1726 by Irish botanist, doctor, and minister Calden Thurkle. I'm terrible at reading names. Calden Thurkle. Thurkled. Calden Thur... Th 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 whatever. Um, but I can't find any online versions of his writings supposedly documenting this, but according to Wikipedia, it might date back even further than, like, that, but I... I can't find anything about it. Eventually, I did find something Get ready for this. It's titled Synopsis Dispermin Hibracuma Dispervisive Comipide Plantis in Genus Partimium Depravibus Instrumus. What is that, like Latin? And uh, it's like 263 pages. And I don't even know if that's the right book. And uh, Amazon dates it as 1823, so I don't know. It's confusing. Kill me. Also, some claim the shamrock has some symbolic importance to, like, the pagan Irish. I couldn't find anything about that, like, there being any pre-existing importance to it. It might have just been, like, a plant. Maybe it, there was some sort of herbal medicine thing going on with that. I, I'm just guessing. But yeah, it seems to, its importance seems to only come with, uh, St. Patrick's involvement. 
according to a bloke named Tirajin, writing in in the uh, seventh century, Saint Patrick spent forty days on top of Mount Kurachan Aglin. I'm bad at pronouncing things. Uh, in imitation of Moses on Mount Sin Sinya Sinya, um, Patrick was. But Patrick was harassed by demonic birds, and he banished them to Lungdal Demon, the Hollow of Demons, by uh, ringing a bell. Now, this uh, bell of St. Patrick is part of a collection of religious relics in uh, Dulaman uh, it's an I which are like items supposedly belonging to Patrick. I don't think think Patrick was the kind of guy to carry around this sort of fancy stuff but because he was very humble if you remember from the first video um, but whatever in a similar story he was vexed by a um, female demon serpent thing named Krua which is I which is supposedly Irish for, um, for like odd spear pointed object or her name is Queer Hawknook, which according to a quick Google search means fire spitter, but I don't know uh, if this is true because she seems more to be associated with like water and poison. Any Irish speakers in the audience? I'm sorry, please help me. I don't know what I'm doing. So after Patrick created a bunch of wind to get rid of her snake babies, um, which is interesting because of the thing earlier mentioned that I mentioned earlier about him supposedly getting rid of the snakes. I don't know if this is important. It just seemed interesting. Uh, they have like an epic anime showdown that lasts two days. Then she tries to run away back to the underworld. So Patrick gets on like the fastest horse in Ireland and uh, she poisons the water hoping that he'll die of thirst before she um, before he like catches up with her Patrick is a priest after all and uh, they're great at managing their thirst eventually he couldn't take it any longer and he, he uh, prays and his horse dumps him into like a puddle of good clean water uh, she she hides in like a lake and he uh, so Patrick hops onto her back she eats him, then like from inside of her, he cuts her open, uh, and her blood made the lake dark red, giving it the name Loch Durng. Um, she also got banished below Mount Crotch, 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 Crunch, um, Crunch Patrick, also known as like Crotch Padringa which I think is um, Irish for Patrick. According to a guy named Mucha, writing in the seventh century, uh, there was like a pagan king named Dari, Dari who uh, wouldn't let Patrick build a church on the hill of Ardmucha, Ardmucha. But he did agree to give him some, like, lower land. Um, then one day, uh, Dar Derry's horse wandered over to uh, Patrick's church. And uh, since... Then one day, Dar Derry's horse wandered over to Patrick's church and scrammed on some grass and it just so happened to die after that. So grieving the loss of his dear horse, and I do mean dear, he uh, blamed Patrick so he told him to th so he told his men to go get him but then miraculous miraculously or unfortunately depending on how you look at it um, he fell ill so then he told his men to go get him so that way he can heal me. So uh, Patrick gets some holy water and revives both Derry and his horse. So 
then he gives Patrick uh, his cauldron and the real estate he wanted. And some say King Derry is actually Dag Dagda. Um, and maybe with the translation I used left out some details, but all that they really have in common is that they're Irish pagan men who ha who were in some form of power, uh, and they had like a cauldron. Dagda's was cooler. Uh, I don't remember Dagda even having a horse or being so antagonistic or even he didn't really do much in the myth if I remember correctly. Um, anyway, in a different story, the king's name is Crom, and Patrick doesn't ask him for land but food, and Crom sends out a sends out his bull to try and fight Patrick, but then the bull feels bad and wants Patrick to eat him instead, which sounds really awkward. Um, rightfully, he so rightfully Crom wants his pet back, so uh, generously. Patrick uh, has the bones brought back um, bra brought back to him and then uh, he brings them back to life which kind of reminds me of that one Norse myth of where uh, Thor like revived like a goat that he ate uh, or as I like to call it the infinite goat glitch in some versions he converts or the the bull kills Krom either way happy ending also, according to Marin McNeil, um, Ma Marin McNeil, uh, August 1st is also called uh, Crom Sunday, but I don't think this is a thing because I can't find any sources online calling it that. Uh, it's just like, according to this one guy in Wikipedia, um, whatever, and that's... Um, that's kind of a random date too to for this guy. It might have something to do with like his name origin. He might he he's most likely named after the mythological villain Krom Durak. But um this video is about St. Patrick and I don't want to do it, but I'll fine. I'll give you a quick summary about that. Um so there was like this festival to like celebrate the summer solstice uh, and the fall equinox, or like, or like the Sunday closest to the equinox, um, and a uh, th this would be like a great inspiration for an over the garden wall fanfic. I mean, it's a harvest festival. Uh, wait, isn't Samhain the Irish? Samhain isn't that the Irish? Harvest Festival. Eh, whatever. I'll look into that. Maybe. Uh, anyway, it's sometimes named... It has some alternate names, one of them being named after the god Lu. If you're not familiar, that's Ku Collins, like, dad. Um, the festival is usually held on the beach. Might I remind you that Irish beaches tend to be very rocky, so that must hurt. There would be like sports, matchmaking, trading Pokemon cards, sacrificing bulls. Remember the bull? Um, that might, this might be the explanation for why that's in there. There would also be dances. Uh, the first meal of the new year would be held. And finally, people would like climb mountains as like a sort of pilgrimage. In the 20th century, its name changed to Luke. Luke Shar Lu which uh if you might remember that's the name that that it's named after Lou. Um among other things, Prom Sunday, according to McNeil writing in I really should have reread this script, whatever. In nineteen sixty two it was symbolic of a battle over grain between like Crom who wanted to hoard it all, and Lou, who wanted to share it with humanity. So that sort of explains a lot about the story and like how Crom wouldn't let Patrick have any food. Anyway, Crom da is, um, led me to think that Krom. He might be like, I'm thinking that maybe he's in a, an embodiment of like famine, blight, or like the winter time, you know, like starvation pretty much. That's my own personal theory. I don't think there's a whole lot to do with that, except for, like, this one particular myth and how he's sometimes, like, poisonous. Anyway, his name 
Crom's name means like black crooked one. Also, uh, it could mean like Thunderhead, Head Chief. Uh, and he's also sometimes called Krong Kruak. Another meaning of the name is that it's like pile, like pile of good or pile of dead soldiers. It's kind of unclear because language is funny like that. Apparently there's like one story where demons were flying by and Patrick asked them what they were up to and they were like Yeah, Crom died, so we're gonna go get a soul. But when they were flying back, Patrick saw that they didn't have him with them and he was like, hey, where's Crom? And then the demons were like Oh, don't you know it? His good deeds just barely outweighed his sins, darn it. Also, in this story, Krom is just like a normal guy that people don't like very much. This kind of makes sense because he's often like depicted as like just not caring about what happens to others. He's kind of like true neutral, leaning neutral evil in that way. Like if you get in his way, he's going to like kill you, but he's not going to go out of his way to like cause trouble. Anyway. Uh, another story says that he tried to put P Patrick into a fire, but Patrick drew a cross on, like, a rock, and then the f fire became, like, um, became Polisine, the hole of the old fire. Then, um, then he was, uh, chased away, then Crom was chased away into his home in, uh, Dunbriston, and, uh, Patrick basically pulled an Avatar Kiyoshi and separated Krom's home from the mainland, so that way I guess he couldn't bother anybody anymore. And if you thought Patrick's abilities involving the dead stopped with cows, you'd be mistaken. So, Akalemnekshun Oh, Irish ancestry, help me, help me. Oh, it's dyslexia, it's killing me. Uh, whatever, I'll put the names in the on screen, describes an uh, encounter between Patrick and two members of the Fianna. If you're wondering what that is, don't worry. I have plans to get to it eventually. I was going to do it. I was going to do it this month, but then I had to split this video into two. Whatever. Um, there were two members of the Fianna. Uh, their names were Calic Mc... Calic to McRana and Ocean, o Ocean, uh, and also they were both dead, by the way. I'm sure they're very interesting and all because they both have their own Wikipedia articles. I already need to hurry things up here. I can't talk about every little minor detail and figure that pops up. I couldn't read the text online about this encounter because it was written in Irish, but the cliff notes seem to be that uh, Kalit and Ocean uh, represent like a short life of uh, an ancient pagan warrior lifestyle Vers and uh, Patrick represents the safe but maybe a bit more boring long life of a member of the clergy. So St. Patrick's Day happens to fall on Lent but there's a dish which is, uh, it's like a semi-tradition uh, that's eaten on March 17th. It's called St. Patrick's Fish. Despite the name and it being Lent and all, it's actually pork. The story goes that during Lent he snuck some pork to save for later, but then he felt guilty, so an angel appeared and urged him to throw the sucker into a river and then it turned into a fish. That's the origin story. Enjoy that. Dragons, most likely from Ossery, who tried to drown out one of Patrick's sermons by howling like wolves. Patrick prayed for them to stop, so God turned them into wolves, and they might be dis like they might be descendants of, or they might be based off of, or related to, because there's like a um a bunch of myths about wolf people in Ireland. Anyway. The mythological character Lingish Lineck Falov. Lineck Falov. Let me check the. Let me check this. Lineck Falov. Okay. 
whose line gave way to the uh, king's rulers of uh, Kilkenny, which is uh, where my family's from. So just imagine how giddy I was finding that out. Oof. And uh, this legend could be based off of uh, accounts of like Irish warriors who would either wear like wolf skins or adopt lupin haircuts. I'm not sure what that means. I tried looking that up. It seems something, seems like it has something to do with herbs. Because like it was believed that certain like herbs could, that certain things called baneful herbs could like turn you into a wolf. Ah, uh, this like dates back to like the ancient Roman era. Um. They could also be linked to the Fianna because of the whole animalistic, wild, pagan, tree-hugger, hippie lifestyle thing. Oh, almost forgot to mention, uh, in Irish mythology, it's very common for, like, wolf people to, like, like, while they're awake, they take on human forms, and while they sleep, they take on, like, wolf appearances. If you've seen wolf walkers, this is exactly that. Now buckle up, because this is the longest segment in the video that I have to get through, and there's a lot of noise above me. Now, the, in, there's a series of uh, stories about St. Patrick and this boy, Bing, Bing, Bengius, Benginus, Benginus, uh, versus King Le Lecher and his druids. So, let's get to it. So, Patrick was passing through the territory of King Lecherus, Le uh, who... Um, who, as far as I can tell, was like a real guy, and um, it just so happened that the pagans were having a festival, and one of the rules of this festival was that no one is to light a fire for any reason until the head druid lit uh, the ceremonial fire, or else they would die, like they'd be murdered, executed. And St. Patrick didn't know this uh, superstition, uh, didn't know about this superstition, so he lit an Easter fire, and according to St. Evan, uh, even if he did know this, he still would have lit it. And, uh, an Easter fire is what you would expect it to be. It's just a fire that is lit before or during Easter Mass. Uh, but anyway, this angered the local king, uh, who see his- who d saw pa um, Patrick doing this. Uh, so he got his, um, chariot all set up, plan, planning to, uh, make, uh, Patrick a saint much quicker. But before he does, uh, a druid tells him to, like, cool off and summon Patrick there, and I guess refuse to answer the door when he shows up. Uh, I guess that's the plan, because maybe they wanted him to freeze to death in the cold or something outside? I don't know. Anyway, eventually, uh, this guy named Eric, son of Dega, um, let him in, and, uh, he converted. So, Patrick won Druid Zero, and later on, Patrick encountered a Druid, a Druid named Lucher, who, uh, diluted the people by means of magic, so Patrick and Lucher had, like, a contest. Lucher tried to, like, fly off the ground, and Patrick prayed, and then God basically twisted him into a pretzel. So, Patrick 2, Druid 0. Uh, but this doesn't seem like something Patrick would be cool with, because, like, he, he's very against murder for any reason. To quote one of his letters, he even, uh, to quote one of his letters, the murder, the murderer can have no part with Christ, Whoever hates a brother is guilty of homicide. Also, whoever does not love a brother remains in death. So, I don't know. I think this was made up, but let's just keep going. Uh, anyway, upon the death of the Druid, the king uh, again made an attempt on Patrick's life, and again he was unsuccessful. Patrick three, Druid zero. And also... There was a, there was a tempest that washed much of the, the land. But uh, there was this one queen who was uh, unaffected because she had converted. So the king, Ler, 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 Lerha, Lerha, um, thinks that Patrick is like some sort of magician, and then he summons him to his court, 
Patrick brings his like eight backup dancers and some kid named Bengus. Bengus, and this is where things start getting like interesting. Uh, to accompany him on his journey to Salen of Terra. Uh, during this road trip, he writes a hymn called uh, St. Patrick's uh, Breastplate, which you might have heard me sing a little snippet of in the last video. See, I'm getting you to go watch my other videos. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, I don't think he would have written a song with his own name in the title, though, because he seems very um, humble, remember? So this could have been made up by St. Evan. Whatever, let's just keep going. So when he gets there, the king is having a feast, and all remain seated except for two poets named Fennec and Derhe. Uh, you see, refusing to stand up when somebody entered is pr uh, basically protesting against their arrival, but luckily uh, these two blokes stood up, so he's allowed to join the party. He's given a seat and some ale, but uh-oh, it's poisoned. But Patrick doesn't let a little thing like poison stop him from getting lit. No, sir. He just uh, blesses the ale somehow and, uh, and turns it the goblet over, and only the poison falls out because it, like, turned to ice or something. Uh, then the druid Lenefina challenges Patrick to a duel and uh, makes it like snow and stuff but uh up to the um men's belts so like up to their waist and uh, and it becomes like dark across the land and like yeah and nobody can get rid of it except patrick who does of course because he literally has the power of god and anime on his side and um so he gets rid of it lickety split just by praying you know the deal patrick four druid zero uh then lair henna like like, um, so then Lekin is like, okay, chuck your books into the water, and whoever's book comes out dry wins. And, uh, like, the druid Lukshe objects on the grounds that God baptizes people through water, and therefore he is water? Um, my guy, you might be a little bit off, but whatever. Then Lurch like, okay, we can just use fire instead. And then the Druid's like, well, if he's water, he could also be fire. Then Patrick's like, no, he's the master of all the elements. So how about you build like a hut? One side is like super flammable. The other side is like wet wood and stuff. And me and uh, Bingus will, Bingus, I'm just going to call him Bingus, will be on uh, the dry side and cover ourselves in like straw and junk and you can cast your spells on the other side and then when Lucius cast his spell uh he and sets both sides on fire but Patrick's cloak I guess is fireproof and it protects him and it protects them both um but it can't let the same can't be said for Lucius because he dies and then the king tries to see if you can guess this one now. Three, two, one. Kill Patrick, yes. Um, but before he could, according to Evan, God got him first, so dead now. Happy ending. Eventually, he died of natural causes on March 17th in uh, Saul. And uh, one thing you gotta know about Catholics is they love their relics and often these things are like various body parts and cities will often like fight over the bits of religious figures looking at you Dante Alighieri. According to the Annals of the Four Masters, the Yulnalin and the Ing Argensal uh, clans both wanted him and there was like a flood which would on which only went away once they came to some kind of an agreement which was and eh, just split them in twain but one has to consider if the second great debate debate was over who gets the half that eats and who gets the more photogenic side later on he was interred at Dundalaxa and when they were holding rites for him for like 12 days and nights the sun wouldn't set. Excerpt from Lewis Carroll's 
through the looking glass. Shining with all his might, he did his very best to make the billow smooth and bright, and this was odd because it was the middle of the night. <laughs>